السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. How are you guys doing? I am so excited to be back again for the fourth time with a new story. We have been all over the world. We were in the U.S. talking about all different type of trees. Then we traveled all the way across the world to Iraq and we spoke about apple trees. And then after that, we went to Turkey and we spoke about Grandma Nejma and how she used to beat her drum. Boom, 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 waking up people to have suhoor in Ramadan in her beautiful little white house in her garden in her backyard. Today, I'm going to continue talking to you about gardens. But this time, this garden is a very special garden. It's not a garden in here in North America, and it's not a garden in Jannah, like we said, which is full of what are beautiful dhikr trees. It's not an apple tree like the one in Iraq. And it's not like the one in Grandma Nejma's backyard. This garden needs a lot of nurturing like any other garden. You think to yourself, if you want to plant something, what do you have to do? You have to water it. You have to give it a lot of sunlight, a lot of care. If any weeds start growing, you have to pluck them out. And the outcome is always beautiful. Either it will give you beautiful flowers that you can smell and enjoy, or it's going to give you some delicious, yummy fruit that you can eat, or maybe it will grow to be a beautiful tree and give you some beautiful shade on a hot, sunny day. Whatever it is that you grow, it's always going to be beneficial. And people love to be in beautiful gardens. And on the contrary, you think to yourself, if you were to leave that garden and not water it, not nurture it, not give it all the things that it needs, what's going to happen? All these little like thorny bushes are going to start growing and you're going to find weeds and maybe some very unpleasant animals that would go in there. And if someone would see that garden, what would they do? They'd feel spooked out. They're like, I don't want to go there, right? On the contrary, when they see a beautiful garden full of roses and trees and fruits and lovely scents, they just want to come to it. Even the bees, when like everything wants to come closer to it because it's just beautiful and it brings us happiness. Now, this garden is somewhere very close to each and every single one of you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you that garden. Do you know what I'm talking about? That garden is your heart. What are you planting in your heart? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us so many beautiful things that we can plant in our hearts. Whether it's kindness, being forgiving, loving for others what we love for ourselves, giving other people excuses, having mercy on others, feeling others' pains, being generous, being kind, so many beautiful things. And the more you nurture these things in your heart, the more people love you and the more angels love you and the more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you and sends you people who love him too. But if we don't take care of our little gardens in our hearts and then we allowed some, you know, hatred to go in there or unkindness or um, something mean or you know bullying or bragging or lying or talking about others behind their backs what happens all of these yucky weeds start growing and then people don't really want to be around us because it's not a nice place just like the real garden we spoke about that if we don't take care of it becomes a very unpleasant place to be so today I am going to talk to you about one of these not very nice weeds that we do not want to have growing in our hearts. And I'm going to read to you a story called The Camel and the Mouse. And you see here that the mouse, maybe he, you know, he got a little bit carried away and he allowed the weed of arrogance to grow in his heart. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that if anyone has the amount like, you know, a mustard seed, a mustard seed is a very small seed, that amount of arrogance in their heart, then they can't go to Jannah. And then if we can't go to Jannah, we don't get to see Sayyidina Muhammad or the Sahaba or see Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and our beautiful castles and gardens that we've been growing by saying SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, Wa La Ilaha Illallah. So let's see together what is the story of the camel and the mouse. And you can see here the camel and the mouse together walking. Kind of weird. You see the mouse is the one who is leading the camel. Let's see what happens. 
<clears throat> a long time ago, there was a tiny mouse that lived in the wild. This little mouse loved to walk around the fields. One day, when he was hopping and jumping about, he came face to face with a giant beast. The mouse was very surprised when he saw this creature. He had never seen an animal so big. He was smaller than this animal's foot. The giant animal was a camel. Do you guys all know camels? Have you ever ridden a camel before? It is the most fun thing ever to do. You got to try it one time. The mouse walked over to the huge camel. Assalamu alaikum, the little mouse said. Wa alaikum assalam, replied the camel. Would you like to be friends? asked the mouse. And you can see here the little tiny mouse standing at the foot of the camel, asking him if he would like to be friends with him. All right, let's see what's going to happen. Do you think they're going to be friends or no? I wonder. Let's see. All right. Okay, replied the camel. But let's stroll together. If you want, you can hold onto my reins. That way, we won't get separated. We can become friends while we walk through this field. The mouse was very happy to hear this. The mouse held onto the camel's reins. He went in front of the camel and they began to walk together. The mouse walked in front and the camel behind. They walked together in the wide fields. They strolled past all the flowers. And here you can see the camel. And who is leading him? The little tiny mouse. That's a very strange friendship, a mouse and a camel. Okay, let's see what's gonna happen. I'm excited to find out. Okay. A little later, the mouse began to speak very arrogantly. Oh, oh, there's a weed growing. He needs to pluck it out quickly. What a strong mouse I am, he boasted. I am leading this giant animal wherever I want. The camel heard the, little, the things the mouse said. Never in my whole life have I seen a mouse speak so arrogantly as this one, thought the camel. Could holding my reins really have made him so proud of himself? Still, the camel didn't say anything to the mouse. The two traveled over the hills and through the valleys. It was a very, very long walk. And here you can see how the mouse is walking, putting his head up high. And there is like a sense of arrogance and the poor camel is like wondering, hmm, what's going on with this little young guy? Okay, let's see what's going to happen. After a while, they came to a stream. The water in the stream was flowing really fast. If the camel and the mouse were to continue their stroll, they needed to cross the stream. Crossing the stream would be very easy for the camel. But for the little mouse, the stream was like a huge ocean. The camel waited to see what the, cat, what the mouse would do. Standing in front of the camel, the mouse held the camel's reins as usual. He came to the edge of the stream. Then he slowly waded into the stream. But before long, the water was up to his neck. Uh-oh. This was too much. The little mouse jumped back to dry land. He was terrified. And you see him here. He's jumping back. He's like, uh-oh. This is not something I can do. You see him running back again to the camel. Okay, let's see what's going to happen. When the camel saw the mouse jump out of the water, he asked, What's wrong, little mouse? Why did you come back? The mouse was out of breath. Uh, nothing's wrong, he said. There's no problem. The mouse, the mouse gathered his strength and went back to the water. He walked on his tippy toes. But stream, the stream flowed so strongly that the mouse could barely save himself. If he hadn't jumped out, he might have drowned. The mouse went running back to the camel. What happened? The camel asked. Couldn't you cross over? 
and you see the poor mouse jumping back out of the water, realizing that maybe he's not that strong after all. Mm. Let's see what's going to happen. <clears throat> the mouse could hardly speak. The water is very deep and fast, replied the mouse. I almost drowned this time. Hold on a minute, said the camel. Let me give it a try. As the mouse stood at the bank of the stream, the camel began to walk into the water. The stream barely got the camel's feet wet. When the camel was in the middle of the stream, he called out to the mouse, Look, I've made it to the middle of the stream, he laughed. The water is barely up to my knees. Why on earth did you jump before coming this far? And you can see here the camel going into the water in the stream and the poor mouse standing on the shore feeling very scared and realizing, you know, maybe I shouldn't have been that arrogant. It's not nice, right? <clears throat> but all knees are different, the mouse answered. Do you and I have the same knees? Then the camel set everything straight. Then don't try to compete with those who are above you just yet, he said to the mouse. Compete with those who are your size. The mouse apologized. He realized that he had been arrogant. You are right, and I am sorry, the mouse replied. Please don't leave me here. Take me to the other side of the stream with you. The camel accepted the mouse's apology. He then carried him on his back on the other to the other side of the stream. And here you can see the camel and the mouse together. Now they're friends again. And the mouse realized that he should have not been arrogant. You see what happened in the beginning? In the beginning of the story, the mouse was very friendly. He was kind. He had some beautiful things growing in his beautiful garden and his heart. Kindness asking others, including those around him. And once he, you know, he did that, the camel wanted to be his friend. He agreed. He said, yes, of course, I want to be your friend. Even though <clears throat> the camel was so big and the mouse was this tiny. But once he allowed arrogance to enter his heart and he allowed that weed to creep inside and kind of make him feel, well, I am better than him. I am holding his reign. What happened? The, the camel right away realized that this is not something nice. He's boasting and he's bragging, right? And he decided to teach him a little lesson. So your turn now is to decide what you are going to grow in your little hearts. Always choose things that make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy. Choose to be kind, choose to be generous, choose to be forgiving and to be loving to those around you. Because the more you do these things, the more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love you. And the more everybody else will love you. And the more you will feel happier and you'll feel that there's goodness coming out from you. And when there's goodness coming out of us, then everybody around us benefits from us, right? But if there's nothing good in there, then what's going to happen? People will walk away and we don't want that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya always fill your little gardens and your hearts with the most beautiful things that will make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His Messenger, and all the angels love you, insha'Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.